I was living at the time in a village about 5 miles out of Shaganj, a district in East Uttar Pradesh, and my only means of transport was a bicycle. I could of course have gone into Shaganj on any obliging farmer's bullock cart, but in spite of bad roads and my own clumsiness as a cyclist, I found the bicycle a trifle faster. I went into Shaganj Almost every day, collected my mail, bought a newspaper, drank innumerable cups of tea and gossiped with the tradesmen. I cycled back to the village at about six in the evening, along a quiet, unfrequented forest road. During the winter months, it was dark by six, and I would have to use a lamp on the bicycle. One evening, when I had covered about half the distance to the village, I was brought to a halt by a small boy who was standing in the middle of the road. The forest at that. Later was no place for a child, wolves and hyenas were common in the district. I got down from my bicycle and approached the boy, but he didn't seem to take much notice of me. What are you doing here on your own? I asked. I'm waiting, he said, without looking at me. Waiting for whom? Your parents? No, I am waiting for my sister. Well, I haven't passed her on the road, I said. She may be further ahead. You had. Better come along with me, we will soon find her. The boy nodded and climbed silently onto the crossbar in front of me. I have never been able to recall his features. Already it was dark and besides, he kept his face turned away from me. The wind was against us, and as I cycled on, I shivered with the cold, but the boy did not seem to feel it. We had not gone far when the light from my lamp fell on the figure of another child who was standing by the side of the road. This time it was a girl. She was a little older than the boy, and her hair was long and wine-swept, hiding most of her face. Here is your sister, I said. Let's take her along with us. The girl did not respond to my smile and she did no more than nod seriously to the boy, but she climbed up on my back carrier and allowed me to pedal off again. There, replies to my friendly questions were monosyllabic, and I gathered that they were very of strangers. Well, when I got to the village, I would hand them over to the headman, and he could locate their parents. The road was level but I felt as though I was cycling uphill. And then I noticed that the boy's head was much closer to my face, that the girl's breathing was loud and heavy, almost as though she was doing the riding. Despite the cold wind, I began to feel hot and suffocated. I think we'd better take a rest, I suggested. No, cried the boy and girl together. No rest. I was so surprised that I rode on without any argument, and then, just as I was, thinking of ignoring their demand and stopping, I noticed that the boy's hands, which were resting on the handlebar, had grown long and black and heavy. My hands shook and the bicycle wobbled about on the road. Be careful, shouted the children in unison. Look where you're going. Their tone now was menacing and far from childlike. I took a quick glance over my shoulder and had my worst fears confirmed. The girl's face was huge and bloated. Ha! Huh. Legs, black and hairy, were trailing along the ground. Stop! ordered the terrible children. Stop near the stream. But before I could do anything, my front wheel hit a stone and the bicycle toppled. Over. As I sprawled in the dust, I felt something hard, like a hoof, hit me on the back of 
the head, and then there was total darkness. When I recovered consciousness, I noticed that the moon had risen and was sparkling. On the waters of a stream, the children were not to be seen anywhere. I got up from the ground and began to brush the dust from my clothes. And then, hearing the sound of splashing and churning in the stream, I looked up again. Two small black buffaloes gazed at me from the muddy, moonlit water.